Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So we're going to review the two matches in the Copa America today as we round off the group stage. So I will be doing a live, we'll be doing a review thing on Rank's channel. I'm not sure how Rank's going to do his thing, if he's going to do a live stream or a premiere or a recording. Um, but remember, guys, to subscribe to his channel. We'll be doing it on there with a complete package. Anyways, let's just go ahead and talk about these two games. Costa Rica 2, Paraguay 1. Now, I'll be completely honest with you and say this right now, guys. I wasn't too focused with this game. Because coming into this game, it was going to be very difficult for Costa Rica to advance. They needed to do the mission impossible by winning, like, basically by a significant margin. And the chance of that happening was very slim. There was no way Costa Rica was going to be that prolific on the day. But shout out to them. They at least did their job and got the win. Unfortunately, the win isn't quite enough for them to make it through because as Brazil tied against Colombia. So... Yeah, it's tough for Costa Rica, man, because I think they put up a great, admirable performance, but it's just they needed to beat Brazil. I think had they have beaten Brazil, oh, they could have been in such a good position. But, you know, they scored those two goals. Uh, shout out to Calvo. Calvo scored the opening goal. A great header there. And the Alcacer scored a fantastic goal there. And the, Colum and the Costa Rica just sat back and allowed observed pressure. Then Sosa gets a goal back for Paraguay. As Sakura, man, man of the match. He made so many saves, guys. Let me just show you guys how dominant of a win this was. Because in the first half, they had two shots, two on target. Then Paraguay grew into the game, had four shots, one on target. Then in the second half, look at the amount of chances Paraguay had in the second half. They should have scored so much more goals, and they didn't. And they put themselves in the back foot. So for Paraguay, man, it's very disappointing to finish bottom of this group with zero points. Um... Uh, you know, but they at least they scored three goals, which is something coming into this Copa America. I wasn't sure if they're going to score goals, and they conceded eight though. They conceded eight goals. It's really sad because Paraguay are known to be very good defensively. Now let's talk about the game that really is significant. The game that we're really here to discuss: Brazil one, Colombia one. Shout out to Colombia. Colombia topped the group, and I have to say, on the day. It was a very interesting performance. Let, let's talk about both teams' lineups. So you look at both teams' lineup here for Brazil. Let's talk about the lineups first, and I'll give you guys the... We'll do a quick run through the game, and then give you guys my overall thoughts. So for Brazil, they started with this game with a 4-2-3-1, which was interesting. And I think it's the right decision. But I still don't understand this point from Dorival Jr. Why do you keep starting Rodrigo at striker? I feel like Rodrigo just isn't working at striker. I just don't think it's working. I don't think it works for this team. And I understand that Endrick is very young and everything, but I still feel like it's better not to put Rodrigo at striker. I feel like if you want to put someone at striker, I think it should be Vinicius at striker, in my opinion. I don't think Rodrigo just works as a striker because you saw his game today. Just didn't I don't do wait, did he get any shots? No, he didn't get any shots whatsoever. I just don't think it's effective whatsoever uh, for Brazil. Um and I still don't know why Joao Gomez is starting. I'm sorry, that Joao Gomez guy is a bum. I'm going to say this right here. He is a complete bum. As for Colombia, that was probably the best 11 they could have gone for. Obviously, Lucheme is injured, which is a huge blow. Uh, but I think for the most part, that midfield was great and the the partner, the attack was great. That first half, man, great goal there from Rafinha. Great, great goal there. Rafinha opening the score in there to make it 1-0. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, that's a good free kick, man. Can Brazil hold on? You know, then they had some cha foul challenges going to there. And then we had the disallowed goal. We had the disallowed goal. Now, for me personally, I believe the goal should have stood. The should have stood. Uh, because I believe it's uh, uh, Davis Sanchez that got the equalizer there uh, by the offside. But it wasn't given. And for me, it, I just don't understand what Condable is doing with the VARs. Like, they, they try to draw the lines. And you, when you look at the lines, they do the player. The player that is up completely, the the player they man, the player they selected isn't even involved with the play. I don't understand why the goal wasn't given. It's just a disgrace of a referee. And by the way, guys, we're gonna talk about VAR because VAR has a huge. We have a lot to discuss about VAR in this game. Then, right before halftime, well, right before Munez scored, a penalty incident occurred. Now, for me. I can understand why this is not a penalty, because Munez won the ball off of Vinicius. For me, it's a bit touch and go. I'm not sure if it's a clear and obvious air, a clear and obvious one, because for me, it's a bit of a weird one, because I feel like I'm not so sure, right? 
uh, because Munez trips Vinicius down inside the box, but he won the ball, but he still trips Vinicius. So very confusing. So basically nothing happened. And then right on the other end, Hamas Rodriguez plays a great through ball to Cordoba and Cordoba plays it to Munez and Munez makes it 1-1. And yeah, that's how it, it that's how the half was going into halftime. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, very, very interesting uh, half, right? Because Colombia were the better team. You just saw how dominant they were. Brazil were really lucky terrible that first half i mean only registered two shots on target but if you actually look at the shots it was very very ineffective uh, colombia had a lot of chance lerma had that miss there rodriguez the 16th minute and obviously diaz there 45th minute before half time he had the effort there i remember the brazil uh goalkeeper made a mess there hamas rodriguez 34th minute free kick save and then rios there uh rodriguez and then R rios right there at the second half man both teams made some changes at halftime uh, Brazil actually brought uh, brought on Andres Pereira, and they actually brought on Mojica, and you could tell that the game was just getting very physical, uh, very um, physical. And obviously, Brazil made two changes. They brought on Ederson, uh, who I thought should have started this game. I thought Joao Gomez was really poor. Savio on for Rodrigo. Then Colombia brought on Urebe, Bore, and Carrasco. Now I don't know how Bore missed that chance. Bore should have scored that chance right there in the 84th minute. That was a glorious chance uh, he could have had to get the uh, get the goal there where is it let me sure we can see right there not this one right there bora 84th minute that was a big big miss big miss and uh, then right at the end there andres Pereira almost scored the winning goal for brazil coming off the bench and he almost did so yeah i think for brazil as i said man very ineffective um rafinha there with a free kick 59th he almost scored again and yeah, Brazil, Colombia, man. I think Colombia, for me, they were the better team. I think they honestly are the happier of the two teams because Colombia, with this draw, actually tops the group. And with Brazil, now they're going to be playing against Uruguay in the quarterfinals, and they're not going to have Vinicius Jr. Vinicius Jr. is suspended due to yellow card. So I think for Colombia, they're going to be the more happier of the two teams. And I think for Colombia, man, they have to improve their finishing because I think that's a big takeaway from this game is that Colombia were the better team. But their finishing is really bad. Their finishing is really bad. Because you look at the stats here. 13 shots, 6 on target, 3 big chances. Guys, Colombia cooked Brazil. It's just that Brazil, Colombia's finishing was really bad on the day. And for Brazil, I think they'll be happy that they weren't at their best and they managed to get a draw. But for Brazil, as I said, man, things have to change. Because I don't feel like Rodrigo got strike just doesn't work. I feel like you got to start, you got to start Vinicius or Endrick. Personally... I would start Endrick. I feel like Endrick has to start, especially knowing that you're playing against Uruguay. And given the fact that Vinicius is suspended, you have to play Endrick. Endrick has to start the next game. Um, and it's crazy to me, Endrick only came off for the last few minutes. I don't understand why Dorival made the substitution so late. And why is Douglas Luiz not starting? It just doesn't make any sense. Like, Douglas Luiz or Ederson should be starting. Don't start Joe Gomez. Joe Gomez. Like, it just doesn't make sense. And, like, why are not getting game time to, like, uh, Martinelli, you know, or Evan Ilson, you know, it just doesn't make sense, you know, for Brazil, as I said, man, they're just, I think the substitutions were very poor in the day. Um, as for Colombia, as I said, man, great. Uh, I think they had a great game plan. I think they played well, and I think they deserve the point. And Hamas Rodriguez, man, what is more to say? The guy cooks for Colombia, man, probably one of Colombia's best players. Munez was great. Sanchez, uh, Cuesta, Cuesta had a good game. Uh, Vargas as well had a good game, made that clutch save at the end. And yeah, uh, Rios, Lerma. Lerma's going to be suspended for the game against Panama, but I think that's okay. They'll, they'll be fine without him, I think. Arias also had a good chance to score. And Luis Diaz wasn't really the best. So I think for Colombia, as a said, man, congrats to them for topping the group. And for Brazil, as a said, man, best of luck against Uruguay. So I'll be dropping my quarterfinal predictions most likely tomorrow for you guys. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, on this channel, guys. So if you guys did enjoy, please let me know your guys' thoughts and comments below. Please run a like and subscribe and peace out.